So I thought it'd be cool to tell you guys about the early days of good old conscience. Um, my first, let's take it back actually before the rap names. I was in about the fourth or fifth grade. I was in elementary school and they had a contest to see who could write, I believe it was, it was, um, it's like a Hallmark card or something. It was basically you're writing a heartfelt message. It could be witty, it could be loving or something like that. But it, it was for the uh, chance to be put inside of a Hallmark card. And I remember um, I won this contest and I don't think I won anything. They just said, hey, your poem was the best. It was like a little two to four line poem that was designed to go into a Hallmark card. And um, in that same year, um, there was a, an arts and crafts assignment where I, for whatever reason, drew and colored a, a double-headed dragon. And I remember that was selected uh, through the art program to be put in um, one of our local politicians' uh, main offices in Arizona. And those two moments kind of ignited in me the gust of wind that kind of brushed me into the arts and music and thinking out loud here even further back my mom would always in her car be playing radio um, she'd have old CDs of all kind of music I mean you know it's like maybe 20 CDs back then seemed like a lot but she would just play a lot of different stuff from like uh mostly if my memory is good it was like r&b um there was some like european like trans um trans music pop music my mom really had a very colorful um taste when it came to music and that wind up kind of getting poured down to me it, it's kind of crazy to think about um, it's like, wow, man, maybe my musical palette is so colorful because my mom just played a bunch of different music that I had never heard before. And I liked the music that she had. I always, you know, thought it was really cool. She didn't like say, Hey, listen to this CD and Hey, listen to that. She was just listening to what she loved and it kind of poured off onto me. Um, but yeah, I got into poetry and then I got into art making and that, um, set the wind in my sail to be a lover of all things uh, music and arts. Fast forward to about middle school and my sixth and seventh grade years of middle school, I moved a lot. I remember being at like four or five different middle schools in one year. And for various reasons, I was moving to different districts and things like that. And I ended up in a different side of town I had never lived before, going to this kind of more preppy upscale middle school and that's where I met my now brother Andrew um, we were in the seventh grade and that was when I had moved to this new area and I saw this kid you know here I am like one of three black guys <laughs> in this town and uh, I met this kid at a lunch table who yeah, you know, I felt like an outcast when I was there. You know, at that time I was skateboarding, um, not very well. I was into music. I was just kind of this punk kid who played video games, watched a lot of movies, and skateboarded and loved basketball. And uh, I met this kid, and what intrigued me about him was he was very comical, um, and he could beatbox. And so he used to beatbox at the lunch table and I used to sit off in the distance and I, I don't remember how, but I eventually found my way at this table. I didn't really get along with anybody in school, not because I didn't like anybody, but because I didn't really fit in with the vibe. Everybody in this side of town had money, um, had their friend circles established. Everybody knew who was cool, who was not and all this. And I was just not really trying to get up in the mix. I was a guy who's, like I said, stayed at home, rode my skateboard, watched movies, played games, and I wasn't really a social guy. Um, and, you know, I I mean, I was social somewhat before I moved to that area, but I was antisocial 
uh, by the time I hit that that campus. <laughs> but anyways, I met this kid who could beatbox, and I used to want to get up in the mix. So I finally forced my way under the table, learned who these guys were, met the kid who who beatboxed, and I would um, do these little raps. And during this time, I had a tape recorder, and back then it was really popular to record the radio and to like I don't remember you used to be able to go online and like find beats it was really limited because you could there was a way that you could buy instrumental CDs back in the day very limited and some websites um, this is like the Napster days you could find some beats you know and I would either way I would record them onto a tape recorder and bring them to school and so he would beatbox I would play these beats, I would be rapping, and I mean, we loved this. I mean, so much so to the point where people thought we were like hanging out a little too much together because there were times at recess where we would just scarf our lunch down and then go walk off into the field and we would be beatboxing to each other and making raps and playing the tape recorder and recording each other doing different stuff. And I mean, guys, this is like seventh grade. This is like, you know now people are starting to think they're cool. People are starting to play sports and, and all this stuff. And here's people seeing, Oh, there's this new kid with this other kid. And they're out in the field, like yelling at each other and rapping and not wanting to hang out with anybody. It was just odd. But I mean, we loved it. We, we both just clearly had a passion for music. And my brother, Andrew at the time, uh, he wasn't my brother. Then he was just my friend. Um, he had a love for music too. You know, he played drums, he played different instruments. He was into world history. He had like a real different kind of appetite for sound and just creativity. And I was really intrigued by that. And we just formed a bond. And, you know, so many years later, you know, I could say that we are brothers, you know, his dad adopted me, um, back when I had first went into college. Um, and so uh, that was like my early day introduction into music. From that point, I used to go to his house religiously and spend the night. Um, and when I'd stay there, you know, we'd light incense. <laughs> I mean, we were just crazy. You know, we would make beef jerky and we'd light incense while we played like all this weird music because we wanted to like catch a vibe and we'd play drums and we we learned how to use sound recorder back then so we were like recording tracks and man guys from seventh grade that right there all that happened that year you know going out and recording on the tape recorder and downloading music and uh, lighting incense and playing the drums and, and, and checking out tracks. And at, at that time, I was still drawing and sketching a whole lot. And that right there was like the birth of just art and expression. From that moment forward, I knew, you know, this wasn't, you know, when you're that young, you're not thinking, oh, this is what I'm going to be when I grow up. But the certainty I had in my mind that I loved art and I loved music and I wanted to be involved was just birthed in that moment. I just knew like I had such a connection that I would never turn away from expressing myself and using the arts and music to do so. And um, there's really a lot more to that story because that really began my musical and art journey and it took me a lot of places. And I'm going to stop the story right here because we're at about five minutes. I wanted to keep this shorter. This is kind of going to be a part series um, that I'm going to develop. But yeah, that was a moment that really just kind of, you know, that was like where all this stuff in my childhood kind of culminated into this season where it was like, wow, I love to do this a lot. And I began to have a passion for it. And what made it all the more better was here I met this kid who had the same passion and when we came together and shared stories and shared our interests we were able to create stuff together that was like so cool to to have you know to have that bond to have the music to learn about music to, to hunt down music it just led to a world of exploration and adventure that I was so grateful for um, in my early days as um, a music and art lover. So um, I'm going to come back in and pick up where we left off uh, another day. But uh, yeah, that's that's part of the beginning of the story of conscience.